Hi, I'm Ulysses. Welcome to Livestream Ninja. This is episode number six, and in this episode, we'll talk about live streaming architecture. Uh, if you need to get a good understanding and grasp of how, how live streaming works, you got to understand the architecture. So I'd like to share with you three areas that uh, covers basically the live streaming architecture, and that's the publishing side, the streaming side, and then the viewing side. So let's look at that. I'm going to share with you uh, my slide. So first of all, uh, publishing side. Um, so you have a live event, whether you have a speaker or, a, or some kind of sports event, and you want to capture that. So you have a camera and some kind of audio source, whether it's a microphone and it's connected to a mixer or through the audio system, the house system. So you capture that using some kind of um, dec or encoder. So the encoder could be a, a software encoder that runs on some kind of desktop, or it could be a hardware encoder, or it could be an IP camera, or it could be a browser in the case of WebRTC. So let's talk about software encoder first. So if you have a software encoder, it's usually some kind of PC or desktop, uh, whether it's a Mac, Linux, or, or a PC running Windows, it doesn't really matter. And um, so you need some kind of capture device to be able to capture your video and your audio, uh, whether it's a PCI card or an external device, it doesn't really matter. And you have uh, some kind of software encoder that runs on that desktop. You know, once again, that desktop could be um, a PC, could be a Mac or Linux. So that software encoder um, captures the 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 camera. Um, captures the um, audio and the video sources and then streams it using the RTMP protocol or real-time messaging protocol and connects to the streaming server. So in the software, the, um, the software encoder, there's usually some kind of uh, RTMP server f uh, information that you have to provide as well as the port and the app name and then the streaming name as well as the username and a password so you configure that to connect to the live streaming server now so some examples of software encoders are out there uh, there's wirecast and it's very popular it's probably the de facto standard and then there's vmix there's obs which is open source and it's, um, obs means uh, open broadcasting software there's xsplit there's uh, others out there and there's dozens of, uh, of uh, uh, software encoders out there that you, allows you to connect to a streaming server. Then you have a hardware encoder. So if you don't want to use a PC, for example, you could use a hardware encoder. Hardware encoders are basically devices that are specifically designed for streaming. It doesn't do anything else, but just does streaming. So it's not as, you know, like, a, like a PC, it does all these different things. You could do all the different things like, you know, word processing, browsing, and all that. But uh, a hardware encoder basically just, um, it's all sole purpose is to stream to the streaming server. Mm -hmm. So it usually has some kind of uh, web interface. So you could put in the RTMP server, the port, the username, passwords, the live app, and then this the streaming name. And you have to provide that on the, um, the web interface of the hardware protocol, of the hardware encoder. Now, you could also use an IP camera. An IP camera is a camera that's connected to the network. It allows you to stream uh, using RTSP, or real-time uh, streaming protocol. Um, usually, when you use RTSP, you have to port forward, it's especially if your streaming server is outside of the local network. And in most cases, it is. Then you have to open up that port on your router to be able to for your streaming server to be able to see it. Uh, some IP cameras have the RTMP feature, so you could just like the software encoder and the hardware encoder, you could use the RTMP protocol and you could push that out, and you don't have to open up the the firewall. 
using the RTMP protocol. Um, so that's uh, an IP camera with both RTSP and RTMP protocols. And then lately, um, uh, if you heard of the technology called WebRTC, um, WebRTC allows the browser, such as Google Chrome or Firefox, to be able to capture your camera and audio source. But from there, um, the WebRTC will publish or connect to the streaming server through what you call session description protocol or SDP. Now there will be other protocols uh, and other formats that the WebRTC uses, like uh, Ice Turn, uh, Stun Servers, and stuff like that. Uh, that's all new technology, and not too many people use the browser or WebRTC to stream, but um, it's an option. Uh, Wowza is using it now; it's capable. Uh, you could do that using the Wowza server. So let's talk about the server. Um, Streaming server um, basically ingests RTMP connection. So you have real-time messaging protocol uh, and it's able to allow, uh, ingest that, uh, or it can ingest RTSP connection as well from, uh, from an IP camera. And it does a couple of things. Um, the streaming server will actually, um, you could tell it to do ABR of adaptive bitrate streaming. But adaptive bitrate streaming is, let's say you have a 1080p connection that's incoming, and then you tell it to uh, create another format at a different resolution, a different bitrate at, at 720p, at 640, at 480, at 360, and so on. So you have one incoming stream and it creates multiple resolutions and different bit rates. And that, that allows what you call adaptive bitrate streaming. So your player, your video player or media player for viewing is capable of doing that, you know, such as JW player. So um, it delivers um, the video to your viewers without any interruption, even if their connection slows down. So if it does slow down, they get switched to a lower resolution if and it, it improves um, they switch to a high resolution and that's what adaptive bitrate streaming is so instead of uh, you know providing a single stream at you know let's say a 1080p you're providing uh, multiple resolutions and different bit rates um, so and the player is smart enough to switch based on the viewers um, uh, bandwidth. Uh, the streaming server also can create multiple formats. So if you have an uh, RTMP connection, it can create different formats such as Apple HLS, uh, MPEG Dash, Adobe uh, HDS, or Microsoft Smooths uh, Streaming, or RTSP as well. So is able to do that. Um, and then obviously you have a player uh, for each of those different formats. The other thing that a streaming server can do is also restream your incoming stream to other um, streaming servers or streaming providers such as YouTube, Facebook Live, uh, Ustream, Livestream, uh, Twitch. So you could send your single stream your incoming stream to other services as well using the restream um, feature. Uh, in the case of Wowza, you usually if you just have one server, they call that the origin server. Now for scalability, if you want, you know, let's say you you got a thousand users and your CPU is way up there, you could always get a higher CPU and get a higher uh, server with you know more memory, more CPU. But you could also create what you call edge servers, where you locate edge servers in different parts of the world. You know, you want to strategically put them in in geographic areas where your viewers are, and you could configure um, the Wasa streaming server as an edge server. And that edge servers, and you have multiple edge servers around the world, and those servers, those edge servers, are talking to the origin server. So that's one way of architecturing the your streaming server. Another way is using what you call content delivery network. 
uh, using either Amazon uh, CloudFront or Akamai or Microsoft Azure or the Google Cloud Platform. And it does take HLS and MPEG dash only because those are based on HTTP. It won't work with RTMP or RTSP. So what that does is basically the same concept that Walls are using, using edge servers. So, but in this case, you're using uh, uh, Amazon, uh, cl the cloud uh, you, pro uh, service provided by Amazon or Akamai or Microsoft Azure or Google. And they will configure um, edge servers around the world. And then you do what you do is you create uh, a player that points to that um, DNS. Uh, so Google and uh, Amazon will um, will provide those DNS names for you and they will do all they handle all the uh, domain name services. So the viewers are connecting to this the servers that are closest to them. So they will do that. All you have to do is push it and configure it. So you got one streaming server, push it to the cloud uh, del delivery network, and then you create a player using the DNS that uh, the CDNs provide for you. So that's how you scale and, and reach your viewers around the world. And then it you know, doesn't matter how many viewers you, uh, in the case of Amazon, you could have thousands and thousands and thousands of users using their CDN and they will handle everything for you. Now on the viewing side, um, so definitely uh, for your viewers to, to view anything, uh, they gotta have some kind of uh, media player. That media player could be on the service provider, you know, such as YouTube and Facebook, so they have it embedded on their pages. But you can also create and embed a player on your own website. So in the case of Wowza, they allow you to uh, use some kind of media player such as uh, JW player and then embed that into your website. And then ha you have to configure the JW player to talk to the streaming server. Um, so in, in terms of um, protocols, um, if you want to reach, uh, you want to use a protocol that reaches to every device, whether they're on a the phone, on a tablet, or on a computer, uh, the most popular and probably the most universal uh, protocol is HLS because it will play on every device practically. But if you want something that uh, has low latency, you have to use RTMP. Uh, but RTMP has limitations. At one time, uh, ja um, uh, Flash was ubiquitous. It was everywhere uh, on every desktop and every device. Uh, but that's changed over the years. Uh, first, Microsoft dropped uh, support for Flash. And now Google and Firefox are eventually going to go away from that and start and stop using Flash. So as of right now, yeah, you can still use, if you want low late latency, you, you can use RTMP, but you're gonna have uh, some kind of player that has supports Flash, such as JW Player. But uh, it won't play on iOS. If you want iOS, you gotta use HLS. And the future really of um, live streaming depends on MPEG Dash. Um, MPEG Dash is a bunch of companies got together and created a standard using MPEG Dash and MPEG Dash pretty much plays on every device except for Safari and iOS devices and Opera. The Opera browser does not support um, MPEG Dash, but if that is the future. But if you want to be able to play on all devices, I recommend that you use HLS. And if you want low latency, on certain devices like desktops, then you have to use RTMP, you know, using a player like JW Player. But anyway, that's essentially the architecture. You get the publishing side, the server side, as well as the viewing or the playback side. So if you have any question, uh, just post on the comments and don't forget to follow and uh, subscribe and visit our website. And thanks for watching. We'll see you in the next video. Thanks for